I'm building an Internet of Things air quality monitoring station to measure airborne chemicals from 3D printing resins in my workshop. Let's crunch the data to see just how bad different resins are. I don't know about you, but when I'm resin printing, sometimes it feels a little like this. But just how careful around resin do you need to be? When DesignSpark sent me one of their open source Internet of Things air quality monitoring kits for beta testing, I had the perfect experiment for it. The kit includes a mainboard, modular sensor boards, hardware and 3D printed parts. A Raspberry Pi is used for the brains of the unit, and considering just how scarce they are at the moment, I was pretty glad to see one included in the kit. The DesignSpark mainboard features a touchscreen and GPS, and connects to the other modules using this neat system of plug and play connectors. This is the particulate matter sensor board that measures different sized airborne particles like smoke and dust. This is the carbon dioxide sensor board, and this board crams in volatile organic compounds, humidity and temperature sensors. The kit came with these nicely printed parts, but I wanted to add my own style, so I changed up the STLs a little using Design Spark Mechanical, and then I printed it in colours to suit my decor. The hardware supplied with the kit is top notch, and I particularly like these heatset inserts that have this little cutout for extra grip. And that is it for soldering on this project. Design Spark recommends using hot glue around the sensors to avoid contaminating them. The sensor boards are added in between the casings and screwed together. It's a neat system and I like the look of it. It took me about an hour to build the kit, plus the print time from earlier. Everything fitted together nicely. The main board attaches to the Raspberry Pi. I added some final design touches and then it was done. Each of the modules plug into each other with a satisfying click. DIN rail slots in to provide support and mounting options. But before we stick it on the wall, let's have a look at the functions. I've powered it up here and sped it up just a little as it takes a minute or so to boot and start reading data from the sensors. The display shows the values from each sensor. Temperature and humidity, carbon dioxide, particulate matter in four different size ranges, and volatile organic compounds that will be the focus of this video. Using the touchscreen, I can navigate between current values and the trends for the previous hour. Only one of the physical buttons is in use right now, and that's used to power off the Pi. I mounted the station on some pegboard where it will take over duty from this cheap little thing. But we don't need to keep track of all that data on the Pi's small screen. The data is transmitted to the DesignSpark metrics platform, which is built on Grafana. Here, I can customise my dashboard and interrogate the data, including setting up thresholds and alarming. So what exactly are VOCs? VOCs are organic chemicals like this one that have a high vapour pressure and low boiling point, leading to volatility. They are in all sorts of household products, but also in industrial products and pollutants. They can have an odour, or none at all, and they can have immediate effects on your health, including respiratory and eye irritation or rashes, as well as long-term effects that aren't fully understood. DesignSpark's VOC board uses a relatively cheap sensor. The VOC data from the sensor is combined with temp and humidity data and thrown into an algorithm to produce an index value. I've added a link in the description with more info on how this works. Let's start with a small example by placing this open bottle of isopropyl alcohol, which is almost entirely VOCs, near the VOC sensor. As you would expect, the value increases over five minutes or so. I designed a simple print using DesignSpark Mechanical that will take just over four hours to print. This should be enough time to collect some useful data which is logged every five seconds. I've removed the carbon filter from my printer to let all of the fumes escape, and I've placed my resin printer near the air quality monitoring station to represent the typical distance that you'd be from it. The air quality monitoring station will be measuring the VOCs during this time, and then we can compare results. I'll only be adding the resin, printing and then removing the print. No washing or curing the prints just yet. Between the prints, I returned the air quality to neutral by removing the prints, resin, used gloves, etc. from the workshop space. I've taken three different resins to print three identical parts. First up is regular cheap resin. This is the resin that I use the most. Looking at the trend, 
we see a slight increase while pouring the resin and setting up the print. Then it's a steady increase with a couple of blips along the way before we see a sharp increase at the completion of the print when the printer lid is removed and it maxes out at 500 on the index. It looks as if there is a build-up of VOCs in the printer that aren't entirely removed by the small exhaust fan during the print. Next is the ABS-like resin. I use this resin for tough parts like small gears where you don't want brittleness. There was a small initial increase in VOCs as I set the print up, but surprisingly it's quite low and steady for the duration of the print. There was still a rapid VOC increase at the end of the print where the VOCs maxed out like the regular resin. Just based on the properties of this resin, I expected it to do worse than the regular resin. Eco Resin uses soy-based oil and any cubic claims that it's VOC free. The air quality monitoring station definitely detects VOCs with a small rise during the print followed by a peak at the end when the lid is removed. This peak is not to the extent of the other two resins though and reaches just over 400 on the index. I'm not sure if the VOC free claim is false or the air quality monitoring station is to blame here. I'm sure some of you are wondering about the washing and curing process too. We already know that the isopropyl alcohol is full of VOCs, but what does this look like over time? I finished off the three parts that were printed earlier in an alcohol wash and then cured them. And this is what it looks like. There was a very sharp increase of VOCs while washing and then a gradual decline once everything was cleaned up and sealed. So probably also a good idea to wear a mask when you are doing this. So what does all of this mean? For me, I'll continue to wear my Breaking Bad gear when I'm resin printing, especially at the end of prints and when I'm washing parts in alcohol. I'm going to continue to monitor the air quality using DesignSpark's air quality kit, and I'm thinking it would be nice to use it to automate some ventilation in my workshop. 